Chapter 6 India after the Mauryas B. South India The Cholas, Pandyas and Cheras south of the Deccan Plateau and south of the Satavahana Kingdom, three kingdoms arose. These were the Cholas, whose center was M. The area of Tanjore, south of Madras, the Pandyas, whose center was at Madurai, and the Keralas or Cheras, along the Malabar coast, now part of Kerala. The region of Tanjore came to be called Tamil Nadu or the land of the Tamils, because Tamil was the language spoken there. Our knowledge of these three South Indian kingdoms, and especially of the Cholas and Pandyas, is based on literature called the Sangam literature. Sangam literature. It is said that many, many centuries ago, three assemblies were held at the town of Madurai. All the poets and bards and wandering minstrels of the South gathered together and composed poems. It is believed that even the gods came to the first of these gatherings. But the poems composed at this gathering are now lost. At the second gathering, 2000 poems were collected into eight books. These are the poems we can read today and which form the Sangam literature. These poems resemble the hymns of the Vedas, but they are not all religious poems. They are written in Tamil. The poets moved from place to place composing poems for the chiefs of the tribes. These poems describe the life of the chiefs and of the common people. The Cholas, the Pandyas and the Cheras seem to have been at war with one another very often, and there are many poems describing these wars. Not content with land BTT-less, the Cholas built a fleet of ships and with these attacked Ceylon. They occupied northern Ceylon for a few years, but were later pushed out by the king of Ceylon. Megas Themes, in his description of India, mentions that the Pandya kingdom was founded by a woman ruler who maintained a very large army. Amongst the kings of Kerala, one was regarded as a great hero. This was Nedunjra Laden, who is said to have conquered many kingdoms and also captured a Roman fleet off the coast of Malabar. The Roman trade, the Malabar coast and the east coast of Tamil Nadu were visited by Roman ships in search of trade. The Empire of Rome controlled all the lands of the Mediterranean at this time and there was a great demand for Indian luxury goods in the markets of Rome. Spices, textiles, precious stones, birds such as the peacock and animals like the monkey were what Romans wanted most from India. Roman ships used to come from the Red Sea across the Arabian Sea to the Malabar coast or up the Straits of Mannar to the east coast. They would fill the ships with the goods they wanted and pay for them in gold and return to Rome. The Roman gold made the South Indian kingdoms very rich. The Romans also lived in towns on the South Indian coasts. Here they collected the goods and made them ready to be shipped to Rome. One of these towns, Arikamedu, which is close to Pondicherry, has been excavated. Many Roman objects were found here. Ships from these ports also went to Southeast Asia and some Indian merchants were trading with China as well. In spite of the difficulties of traveling by ship, there were enough adventurous people who were willing to take the risk, within India, goods from South India were now being sent to the north. The export of precious stones from the south brought in much wealth for the southern kingdoms. Life of the people, most of the people in South India lived in villages. In the hills where it was difficult to till fields, they kept animals. Many of the merchants and the craftsmen lived in the towns and most of these were on the coast, from where trade was easy. The kingdom was ruled by a king who was assisted by his Brahman advisors. There was also a general assembly of all the chiefs known. As the Sabha, here various matters, such as whether to go to war and whether to punish a pet son F. or some crime, were discussed. The king collected taxes from the peasants, the herdsmen, the craftsmen and the merchants. The merchants were taxed when they were taking goods from one place to another. Whether in the towns or in the villages, he was on the whole simple. After the day's work, amusements consisted of gambling and playing games. Music, dancing and poetry recitations were popular. Musical instruments of various kinds were used, as, for example, pipes, flutes, string instruments and diems. There was special music for the different hours of the day and night. Religion Religious ideas from the north, such as the worship of the Vedic gods and the doctrines of Buddhism and Jainism, were known to the people of the south. Some of them followed these religions, but most people still worshipped their older gods and goddesses and practiced their own religious ceremonies. Murugan, known as Kartike or Skandaram the north, 
was the best loved god of the Tamil people. He was believed to live in the hills. He was the god of war and strength, and sacrifices were made to him, together with the chanting of prayers. There was great respect for heroes who had died fighting bravely and they too were worshipped. The people living on the coast prayed to a sea god. For many centuries, the Tamils lived in this way until the Pallava kings in the 6th century established a large kingdom. Christianity Traders from Western Asia brought with them in the 1st century AD some teachers of a new religion which arose in Western Asia. This was Christianity, and it had been preached by Jesus Christ. It was based on the earlier Jewish religion which taught the worship of a single God. Christ was believed to be not only the Messiah, or Messenger, of God, but in fact the Son of God Christ emphasized the love which God has for man who is created by God. Men should lead good lives and when they die their souls will go to heaven and be reunited with God. Christianity in various forms spread all over Europe where it became the dominant religion. In India Christianity first spread among the people of the Malabar coast and in areas near present-day Madras. Early Christian writers used the date of the birth of Christ as a new system of counting years, or an era, as it is called. Thus events which happened before the birth of Christ were dated M years BC, before Christ, and those which happened after the birth of Christ in AD, Anno Domini, which is the Latin for, in the year of the Lord. This system of dating events is used almost all over the world today.